operating into, uh, from moving into the surge line region. So what we do is, uh, let me just uh, erase it first. So what we do is, <coughs> so what we do is, yeah. what we do is we maintain a certain margin here. This is called SLL, surge limit line. So the surge limit line is the point at which the anti-surge system will kick in. So, so the, 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 but I mean, I, I'll just tell it now in case you don't understand, no problem. We'll go to the next slide and I can explain that. Ideally, I should have put that here and then taken this there, but let's start here. So the surge, so I haven't shown here, but in reality, it's called SLL, surge, uh, sorry, SCL, surge control line. Surge control line is the point where the anti-surge uh, system will kick in and do whatever it takes to pull the compressor out of the surge uh, region. And then on the other end, you have what is called SLL, surge limit line. No matter what happens, you're never meant to cross the uh, surge limit line. In reality, what happens is that if the surge point, uh, if the operating point crosses the surge line, the you will see oscillations like this before it before the compressor trips and the operating point goes to zero. We do not want something like this to happen. So always, always operate the comp compressor within the, the, um, the allowable uh, envelope as determined by the manufacturer. Next, uh, this is one more point I have to cover here. Now, the, the way, so when, when as an engineer, when you give your requirements to the, to the vendor or the, the, the manufacturer, what he does is that he tries to choose, so let's say the operating point is sitting somewhere here. He would try to see, he would try to match that with the best efficiency point. Although here I haven't, I've put it like this, but in reality, the maps could be like this. So if you ever, uh, if you ever get a chance to see the, for various speeds, so speed one, speed two, speed three, speed four, like that you've got for different speeds. So the idea is, the manufacturer would select an operating point. He would choose his impellers from his database such that the operating point will match your requirements and it will also correspond to the maximum polytropic efficiency. Now, here, if you observe, you've got, you've got an expression, which is, it is to relate the polytropic head with the pressure ratio. Now, pumps are for liquids, com gas compressors are for gas. Pumps use income, <clears throat> incompressible liquids operate with incompressible liquids and gas compressors operate with compressible liquids. So with a pump, the density can be expected to be more or less the same. So we straight away say uh, delta P, let's say DP is, um, is rho GH because the density is fairly constant. Uh, you can straight away apply rho GH, but in a gas compressor, because it is compressible, the density will also change. So what we do is that this expression that you see here is no different from that of a pump, except that we are taking into account the compressible, the compressible nature of the gas through the compressibility factor, the inlet temperature, the molecular weight, and the polytropic exponent. One way to define what is a polytropic exponent is a simple way is how much uh, the gas deviates from ideal behavior. So higher the polytropic exponent, the more, uh, the more it is deviating from an ideal gas. Then, so the, the polytropic head is also correlated with the pressure ratio. So from this, what we can understand is, if you, so, and uh, before that, so the, and the amount of power that is required to, to compress a gas from an initial pressure to, to, to the final pressure is, a, is, is the polytropic head into the mass flow rate divided by the polytropic efficiency. So why I, this is an easy expression, at least to me, because I use that, because polytropic head is kilojoule per, uh, let's say kilojoule per second, uh, or kilo, sorry, kilojoule per kg, and flow rate is uh, kg per second. So when the kgs uh, get canceled in the numerator and denominator, you get kilojoule per second or kilowatts. So what we can understand is the more the polytropic, for a given mass flow rate, as the polytropic head increases, you need more power to compress the gas. Point number two, if the molecular weight of, of the, for, for, all, for, a, for a given set of uh, pressure ratio and process conditions, pro, uh, sorry, fluid parameters, 
for a given for a given so if z r t polytropic exponent for for a given set of data as the poly, as the molecular weight of the gas increases the polytropic head decreases and so does the power and vice versa that is so let's say you have methane and you have natural gas between methane and uh, natural gas for the same pressure ratio you need more power to compress methane whereas natural gas has higher molecular weight so it takes less power to compress so less power to compress it so for a given pressure ratio as the gas gets heavier and heavier you will need less power to 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 compress it second point is inlet temperature if the inlet temperature is if the inlet temperature is higher that is if the gas gets too hot the amount of polytropic head also increases which means you need more you need to push in more power to compress a hotter gas so gas at let's say 25 degrees celsius you want to raise it from 2 bar to 10 bar pressure let's <clears throat> some amount of some kilowatts it takes but if that same gas is at let's say 50 or 60 degrees celsius you need to push in more power to raise it to that to 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 raise it to uh, to to the same 10 bar absolute pressure so to summarize this slide compressor maps are the way we the the the, the way the way we um uh, define uh, the way we define the behavior of a gas compressor is by looking at a plot between the polytropic head generated for a given uh, actual volumetric flow rate and also uh, the polytropic efficiency versus the actual volumetric flow rate the compressor a, a compressor can run at almost any speed but there are mechanical and aerodynamic limitations which will decide what is the maximum speed uh, uh, a compressor can run at the nature of the performance maps so compressor maps we can also call them as performance maps or performance curves so the nature of 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 the compressor's performance curve is parabolic in nature for different speeds the nature is more or less the same except that as you keep increasing the speed for a given volumetric flow rate the head generated will be higher on the left hand side you have the surge region and on the right hand side and on the and on the right hand side you have the stone wall region uh, we, we it is imperative that we do not operate the gas compressor either in the surge region or the stone wall region to prevent the operating point from from crossing into the surge line we we install an anti surge controller but the to tell the anti surge controller when it has to begin to operate we place what is called a surge margin surge margin is uh, which is surge mark we maintain a margin so this so it surge margin can be anywhere between 7% to 10% or, or even 15% depending on how close the operating point is if it is too close here it is better to push the surge margin a little more to to ensure that uh, so the the closer you move to the surge control line that much more risky uh, the, the operation gets so the surge margin can be anywhere between 7% to 15% or it can be even higher depending on the on 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 the compressor maps or the, the way it is the the you in the uh, the surge margin line is is, uh, is known as the surge control line scl surge control line is the point at which the anti surge control system kicks into action and the 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 the, the surge line or what we can say sll the surge limit line this is the limit beyond which the compressor can trip once the operating point crosses the surge line in reality you can have oscillations before the compressor goes to uh, goes to zero speed because of a trip then the gases are, uh, vapors are compressible liquids are or are, are nearly in, incompressible so therefore liquids have constant density whereas in a gas compressor the density changes very significantly so therefore uh, the polytropic head is related to the pressure ratio of the gas Uh, as shown here uh, with these two expressions what we are doing is we are taking into account the changes in density through the gas compressibility factor the inlet temperature molecular weight polytropic exponent and the pressure ratio with that we can estimate what is the polytropic head that is how many kilojoules of energy is is required to compress 1 kilo of gas from an initial pressure to a final pressure so higher the polytropic head higher is the amount of energy required to compress a kilo of gas 
to the required uh, pressure ratio. The, when a manufacturer provides you with the performance curves, uh, the polytropic head versus the actual, actual volumetric flow rate, the operating point must operate as close as possible to the maximum efficiency. At lower efficiencies, again, you require more power to compress the gas. So, and, and on a final note, always, always operate the gas compressor without, within the allowable limits to prevent mechanical damage. Wait, let me remove this. Uh, yeah. Oh, boy. Yeah. yeah. Okay, now we go to the next slide. Draw. Yeah. Next slide. Oh, I haven't. Uh, yeah. Next slide. So what are the different kind of drivers that you have to, 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 to drive a gas compressor? You can use gas turbines, electric motors, or steam turbines. Steam turbines have, be, have been have